from Berlin, Germany, it's theCUBE. Covering DataWorks Summit Europe 2018. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Well, hello, I'm James Kabilis and welcome to theCUBE. We are here at DataWorks Summit 2018 in Berlin, Germany. It's a great event. Um, Hortonworks is the host. Um, they made some great announcements. They've had partners um, doing the keynotes and the sessions, uh, breakouts, and IBM is one of their big partners. Uh, speaking of IBM, we have, uh, with, uh, from IBM, we have a program Good. manager, Piotr, I'll get this right, Piotr Mirzajewski. Mm -hmm. um, your focus is on data science, machine learning, and data science experience, which uh, is the IBM, one of the IBM products for working data scientists to mm -hmm. build and to train models in team data science, uh, uh, enterprise operational environment. So, Pio, welcome to theCUBE. I don't think we've had you, you before. I'd like you to, to you're a program a manager, I'd like you to discuss what you mm -hmm. do for IBM. I'd like you to discuss data science experience. I know okay. that Hortonworks is a reseller of data science mm. experience. So I'd like you to discuss the partnership going forward mm -hmm. and how you and Hortonworks are serving your customers, data scientists, um, and others in those teams who are building and training and deploying machine learning and deep learning AI into operational applications. So, uh, Piot, I give well, it to you now. Thank you, That's a, thank you for having me here, very excited. This is a very loaded question. And I would like to begin, before I get actually why the partnership makes sense, yes. I would like to begin with the two things. First, there is no machine learning without data. And the second, machine learning is not easy. Especially, especially I when never you said actually. It was. <laughs> well, there's this kind of perception. Like you, you can have a data scientist working on their <coughs> Mac, you know, working on some machine learning algorithms, and they can create a recommendation engine, mm -hmm. let's say, in a two, three days' time. Mm -hmm. This is because of the explosion of open source in that space. You have uh, thousands of libraries from Python, from R, from Scala, mm -hmm. and you know, you have access to Spark. All these various open source offerings that are ena enabling data scientists to actually do this wonderful work. However, when you start talking about bringing machine learning to the enterprise, this is not an easy thing to do. You have to be, you think about governance, resiliency, the data access, actual model deployments, which are not that trivial, when you have to expose this in a uniform fashion to actually various business units. Now, all this has to actually work in a private clouds, public clouds environments, on a variety of hardware, a variety of the uh, different operating systems. Now, that is not trivial. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you deploy a model, as a data scientist is going to deploy the model, he needs to be able to actually explain how the model was created. He has to be able to explain what the data was used. He needs to ensure... Explicable AI or explicable machine learning. Yeah, that's a hot Indeed. focus of, or concern of enterprises everywhere, especially in a world of Govern or governance and tracking mm -hmm. and lineage. Precisely. GDPR and so forth, so hot. Yes, so, yeah. you've mentioned all the right things. Yeah. Now, so given those two things, there's no ML web data and ML is not easy. Why the partnership between Hortonworks and IBM makes sense? Well, you're looking at the number one industry leading big data platform in Hortonworks. Then you look at a DSX local, which I'm proud to say I've been there since the first line of code, and I'm really very passionate about the product, is the merge between the two ability to integrate them tightly together, gives your data scientists secure access to data, mm -hmm. ability to leverage the Spark that runs inside a Holtonworks cluster, ability to actually work in a platform like DSX mm -hmm. that doesn't limit you to just one kind of technology but allows you to work with the multiple technologies, mm -hmm. ability to actually work on your not only Spark you say technologies here, you're referring yes. to frameworks like TensorFlow? Precisely, and okay, okay. very good. Now, that part I'm going to get into very shortly. Okay. <laughs> so please don't steal my thunder. Okay. <laughs> Now, uh, what I was saying is that not only DSX and, and Hortonworks integrated to the point that you can actually manage your Hadoop clusters, Hadoop environments within a DSX, mm -hmm. you can actually work on your Python models, on your analytics within DSX, and then push it remotely to be executed where your data is. Now, why is this important? If you work with the data that's megabytes, gigabytes, maybe you, know, you can pull it in. But in truly, what you want to do when you move to the terabytes and the petabytes, uh, mm -hmm. petabytes uh, of data, what happens is that you actually have to push the analytics to where your data is right and leverage, for example, Yarn, a resource manager, to distribute your workloads mm -hmm. and actually train your models on your actual HDP cluster. Mm -hmm. That's one of the huge value propositions. Now, mind you to say, this is all done in a secure fashion uh, with ability to actually install DSX on the edge nodes of the HDP clusters. Mm -hmm. 
as of HDP 264, DSX has been certified to actually work with HDP. Hmm. Now, this partnership embarked, we embarked on this partnership about 10 months ago. Now, often happens that there are, there are announcements, but there's not much materializing after such announcement. This is not true in case of DSX and HDP. We have had, just recently, we have had a release of the DSX 1.2, which I'm super excited about. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about those open source toolings and the various yes. platforms. Now, you don't want to force your data scientist to actually work with just one environment. Some of them might prefer work on Spark. Some of them like their R Studio, their statisticians, they like R. Yes. Others like Python with the Zeppelin, I'd say Jupyter Notebook. Now, how about TensorFlow? What if you're gonna do, what are you gonna do with actually, you know, we have to do the deep learning workloads when you wanna use neural nets. Well, DSX does support ability to actually bring in GPU nodes and do the TensorFlow training yes. as a sidecar approach. You can append the node, you can scale the platform horizontally and vertically, and use your deep, you know, train the deep learning workloads and actually remove the sidecar out. So you should put it towards a cluster and remove it at will. Now, DSX also actually not only satisfies the, use, uh, satisfies the needs of your programmer data scientists that actually code in Python and, Sc mm -hmm. and Scala or R, but actually allows your business analysts to work and create the models in a visual fashion. As of DSX 1.2, you can actually, we have embedded, integrated, an SPSS modeler. Hmm. Redesigned, rebranded, this is an amazing technology from IBM that's been around for a while, very well established, but now with the new interface, embedded inside a DSX platform, allows your business analysts to actually train and create a model in a visual fashion. And what's beautiful. Business analysts, not traditional yes. data scientists. No traditional data scientists. That sounds equivalent to how mm -hmm. IBM, a few years back, yep. uh, was able to bring more of a visual experience to SPSS proper to enable Precisely. the business analysts of the world to build and do data mining and so forth with structured data. Go ahead. I no, 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 no precisely. No, but, <laughs> but I see it's the same phenomenon. No you bring the same capability to bring, yes. to greatly expand the range of professionals, data professionals, who can do, in this case, mm -hmm. do machine learning as well, hopefully as well as a, a professional dedicated data scientist. Certainly. Yeah. Now, what we have to also understand is that data science is actually a team sport. It's not only that it involves, and it involves various, uh, various stakeholders yeah. from your organization. From executive that actually gives you the business use case, okay, to your data engineers that actually understand where your data is and can give you grant they access. They manage the Hadoop clusters, many of Precisely. them. Precisely, yeah. yes, so they manage the Hadoop clusters. Uh, they actually manage your relational databases because we have to realize that the data, not all the data is in the data lakes yet. Yes. You have legacy systems which DSX allows you to actually connect to and integrate, integrate the data from. It also allows you to actually consume data from streaming sources. Mm -hmm. So if you had actually have a, Maf a Kafka message hub and that actually stre we're streaming data from your applications or IoT devices, you can actually integrate all those various data sources and federate them within a the DSX to use for machine training models. Mm. Now, this is all around predictive analytics. But what if I tell you that right now with the DSX, you can actually do prescriptive analytics as well. With the 1.2 again, I'm going to mm -hmm. be coming back to this 1.2 okay. DSX with the most recent release. We have actually added decision optimization. An industry leading solution from uh, IBM. Prescriptive analytics. Yes, gotcha. for prescriptive analytics. Yes. So now if you have uh, warehouses or you have a fleet of trucks or you want to optimize the flow in let's say a utility company, would it be for power or could it be for, uh, uh, for let's say for, the, for water? You can actually create and train prescriptive models mm -hmm. within DSX and deploy them the same fashion as you would deploy and manage your SPSS streams, mm. as well as the machine learning models from Spark, mm. uh, from Python, so we we'll, have we'll like XGBoost, TensorFlow, Keras, all those various aspects. Mm -hmm. Now, what's going to get really exciting, that in the next two months, DSX will actually bring in natural learning, learning processing mm. and text analysis and sentiment analysis. By via Wex. So Watson Explorer, it's another uh, offering from IBM. It's called what is the uh, name Watson of it? Explorer. Oh, Watson Explorer. Watson Explorer. Yes. 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 So now you're going to have this collaborative massive platform, extendable, extendable collaborative platform that can actually install and run in your data centers without the need to access internet. Yeah. That's actually critical. Yes, yes, we can deploy an AWS. Yes, we can deploy in an Azure, on Google Cloud. Definitely we can deploy in a soft layer, and we're very good at that. However, in the majority of the cases, we find that the customers have challenges for bringing the data out to the cloud environments. Hence, with DSX, we design it to actually deploy and run and scale everywhere. Mm. Now, how we have done it? 
we've embraced open source. This was a huge shift within IBM to realize that, yes, we do have 350,000 employees. Yes, we could develop container technologies, but mm. why? Why not embrace what is actually industry standards with, with the Docker and the Kubernetes right, that became yeah. industry standards? Bring in our studio, the Jupyter, the Zeppelin notebooks. Bring in the ability for your data science to choose the environments they want to work with and actually extend them. And make the deployments of web services, applications, the models, and those are actually the full releases. Mm -hmm. I'm not only talking about the model, I'm talking about the scripts that can go with that. Ability to actually pull the data in and allow the models to be retrained, evaluated, and actually redeployed without taking them down. Hmm. Now, that's what actually becomes, the, that's what is the, the true differentiator when it comes to DSX, and all done in either your public or private cloud environments. So that's coming mm -hmm. in the next version of DSX? Oh, uh, outside of the we web, we're almost out of time. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. Yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> no that's my job yeah. as the uh, host to mm -hmm, let you know that. So, if you could summarize, so where DSX is going in 30 seconds or less, less as a as a product, uh, what's the the next version? Is what is it? The, the uh, it's going to be the one to one. Okay. One to one, and we're expecting to uh, to release at the end of June. Okay. What's going to be unique in a one to one is uh, infusing the text and sentiment analysis, yes. so natural language processing, processing with predictive and prescriptive analysis for both the developers and your business analysts. Yes. So essentially a platform, not only for your data scientists, but pretty much every single persona inside your organization. Including your marketing professionals who are b b baking yes. sentiment analysis into what they do. Thank you very much. This has been Piotr Mirzajewski of you. IBM. He's a program manager for DSX and for AI and uh, data, uh, AI, ML, AI and data science um, uh, solutions mm -hmm. and of course, uh, strong partnership with uh, Hortonworks. We have, uh, we're here at DataWorks Summit in Berlin. We've had two excellent days of conversations with industry experts, including mm -hmm. Piot. We want to thank uh, everyone. We want to thank the host of this event, uh, Hortonworks, for having us here. We want to thank all of our guests, all these experts, for sharing their time, their, uh, their busy mm -hmm. schedules. Um, we want to thank everybody at this event for all the fascinating conversations. The breakout's been great. The whole mm -hmm. buzz here is exciting. GDPR is coming down and everybody's gearing up, getting mm -hmm. ready for that. But everybody's also focused on innovative and disruptive uses of AI and machine learning and business and uh, using tools like DSX. I'm James Kobielis for the entire CUBE team, the SiliconANGLE Media. Um, w wishing you all, uh, uh, wherever you are, whenever you watch us, have a good day and uh, thank you for watching theCUBE. <laughs>